Good morning, everybody. This is Monday, October the 24th. When I'm recording this, this is John Blank, the Zach's chief equity strategist. Let's go through the disclosures like we always do. These are my views, John Blank, PhD, and not necessarily the views of Zach's investment research. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Uh, okay, so today what I got for you is round four of a five round series. We're going to talk about battery technology and electric auto stocks. This is going to be a good one, folks. Uh, so part one, we'll get into the major semi industries. We'll review that. We'll recap that. Get into the 10 auto semi stocks we've already talked about. And then I'm going to introduce you to, to lithium ion batteries, the technology. Argonne National Labs done a ton of work on this. They will continue to do a ton of work on this. This is fascinating. Part two, Zach's major electric auto stocks. So let's take a look at six or seven or eight of these stocks and talk about what the, the story is here, what the backdrop is. This is also fascinating. Round five, I will leave off this time around. I just had so much material to show you that I'll put it out there just as a teaser. We're going to get into the ETFs for the electric vehicles and a ton of vehicles in our next series in early November. So this is my plan, and I think you're going to love this. So let's go. All right. Major semi-industries. The auto semi stocks and an intro to the lithium ion battery story. All right, remember these groups? Let's get through them again just so we have a background. It's the last 10 years of data. And at the top, we've got our general semiconductor stocks NVIDIA, Intel, and Texas Instruments. Then down here, we've got the analog and mixed. And then down here at the bottom, we have digital and mixed. Then we've got over here, communications, electronic components, the equipment, photo mass groups, the Fab Circuit Foundries, Taiwan Semi, don't ever forget that company, Micron, which is in memory. And then down here, we've got the discretes and the wafer fabricators. Again, a huge player here is ASML that reported last week and did quite well, along with LAM Research, which also reported last week. So keep all in mind that we have many semiconductor groups doing all kinds of work on different parts of an automotive factory, but the back end and the and the, the diversity of these chips has to kept, be kept in mind as we go through this. Okay, so this is the actual auto semi tickers that we think are going to play a role here. Also down here, keep this. In mind, I put the location of these Argon PDFs for the introduction to lithium ion batteries. This is a 20 slide production. It's the government, it's excellent. Keep this and copy and paste this. Get a hold of these slides for that PDF location alone. That is key for your understanding of lithium ion batteries. However, we're going to go through here the actual chips that stocks that are making a play here keep these in mind here these are my german names texas instruments always has to be put in here and then up here we have the ones in the u.s that are playing a role infineon actually is a german company but keep in mind analog devices infineon technology micron nxp in in the netherlands on and we got renaissance robert bosch rome texas instruments and st micro these are our calls. Keep this in mind as you look about more into those auto semi stocks. So my next step, I'm going to go into the Argon Lab story. Okay, first of all, we need to understand how just how extensive the Argon National Laboratory ecosystem is. Now we talked about the National Institute of Standards and Testing for the Chips (NIST). The Argon National Laboratory ecosystem is going to be the same kind of thing for the lithium ion battery research. So on the West Coast, you've got Lawrence Berkeley, Lawrence Livermore, and the National Accelerator Lab. We've got three of them out here, mainly in the north around San Francisco. The Pacific Northwest National Lab, the Idaho National Lab, remember Micron is here. National Renewable Energy Lab in Colorado, Los Alamos and Sandia. The Ames Lab in Iowa, Fermi Accelerator in Illinois, the National Energy Technology Lab in Pennsylvania, Oak Ridge, Savannah River, Thomas Jefferson's Natural 
accelerator facility, interesting to have in Virginia near Jefferson. The Princeton's physics lab, of course, that was the Einstein in that group, and Brookhaven up in the Northeast. So this is a multiple variety of very important labs for this type of work. All right, so this is a critical story here about these lithium ion batteries. But four slides here to talk about. Increased density of the different chemistries and, and their applications. So first of all, I want to point out all batteries have the negative anode and the positive cathode. You know this, I know this, but what you don't know is you need graphite and lithium here really, really adds more charge to these batteries. Lithium ion batteries have greater potential when you have an anode that is lithium ion. So what happens here is they put you know, a cell into a module which goes into a pack. This is what you'll see at the bottom of a Tesla when you see it. This is a pack of batteries that make modules and then form cells and the cells have an anode, the negative, and the cathode, which is positive. Now, you can also know that cathodes have various different uh, metals. You've got manganese, cobalt, iron, manganese again, nickel, I think, is right in here. So those will come down in here. But when we're talking about cathodes and the different uses, we're going to have those laid out here for you. That's over here. The anodes, lithium, graphite, this is the key for the whole idea. So over here again, anodes send the discharge, the cathodes send the charge back, the electrolytes are in the middle. This is a basic battery. Discharge power to the device goes that way. Charge goes this way. So again, here's the battery picture right up here. And this is all of our stories of how batteries work. And all batteries use this same basic configuration, anode, cathode, and electrolyte. Okay, that's the electrolyte between the anode and the cathode. Okay, lithium batteries and lithium batteries are different because they use lithium metal anodes, like I told you. These are non-rechargeable, and lithium battery use graphite or other materials. So it's in the anode, anode, where this is different. That is what's different. Now, down here, you can see the different chemistries that are playing a role here with the cathodes and the electrolytes. Cobalt is what's used for cell phones and cameras and laptops. That is the key thing to understand here. Since the 1990s, this has been the most common thing for portable devices. This is cathodes. Then we have the manganese, which are power tools, nickel cobalt and false phosphate. All these are lesser things. The main thing you want to understand here is cobalt, cobalt, is the key one for cameras, cell phones, and laptops. And that's been true for the last 30 years. So down here, we have this really critical story of what you need to understand. This is watt hours per liter, and this is watt hours per kilogram. So this is volume, volume. The, the bigger the watt hours per liter, that's the smaller the device. So as we go up here, these are smaller devices. Watt hours per kilogram, the further out here, we get lighter devices. So smaller and lighter is better, right? That's what we would like to see. Down here is the lead acid. This is your typical battery you buy in the grocery or drugstore and put in your phone or whatever. So you can notice that it's very large and very heavy down here. Now. What is neat about lithium ion, you can see it's over here. It is super powerful and it's a lot smaller. So that is, it's lighter and smaller, and it's also much more powerful because you're getting one hours per kilogram are much, much higher, 400 versus 50. So eight, 10, 12 times higher. This is why there's so much interest in lithium ion as a metal. Metal and metal anodes in general, metal anodes, Increase watt hours per kilogram. So it's the actual power that they can deliver. Now, here is a, a kind of a story of these are the technologies that Argon is working on in NASA. EV Everywhere was started by the Obama administration in 2012. So that's down here. 
Then NASA got in. Obviously, NASA has interest in these battery packs for their own propulsions. Then there's Battery 500, which is a consortium of labs at Argonne and, and universities. Battery 500, as you might notice, is at the 500 watt hours per kilogram. It's at 700 on the watt hours per liter, but 500 on the watt hours per kilogram. So that is the Battery 500. That's why they call it Battery 500. Then out here at JCESR, I think that stands for J Energy Systems Research. So Joint Command for Energy Systems Research. This thing is the holy grail, obviously. So here you can see the government, this is in 2017, by the way, Battery 500. EV Everest 2012, and then you get this newest one out here, and that's somewhere in between. You can see what the government wants to do. Lighter, lighter and smaller, more powerful. That's the drive. That's the future. Cobalt is what's in the cathodes. That's most of your cell phones and cameras and everything. And the anodes are the lithium and graphite play that you need to understand for this whole thing to work. And you can see here is where the lithium ion batteries can deliver. There is where the lead acid batteries deliver. No question about it. These are very different types of inter inter interventions into the battery space. All right, electric auto stocks. Let's get moving. All right, first of all, broker recommendations. I've got up here, I've got Volkswagen and Tesla. Those are the two biggies out, you know, out there in the electric vehicle space you probably know about. Very different patterns here. Volkswagen struggling, obviously, it's in Germany, and it's had a, a huge rundown. It's basically back. You'll see, though, that the stock always gets down in these kind of price level $15 a share, whereas Tesla has just exploded, right? Now we're talking about $200 share split from $400. It's lost half the value recently. It's kind of finding a floor here, it looks. And the broker X people are still bullish on this last two years. Uh, so this stock has basically taken all the, the notoriety in this space away from everybody else. But down here, you've got GM Ford, and over here, we get Nicola, which is this gentleman who set this firm up, has been indicted for fraud, and you can see this stock is going, zeroing itself out. So you gotta be careful in this space. There are people who are trying to leverage the enthusiasm for Tesla in new ways, and you can see this really didn't work. If you got in at the 60s, back in the middle of 2020, you're out at two. Um, I've been told there is some really interesting technology and configurations with Nikola. We may find it on a revived platform with someone else running it. Now, GM and Ford are in very different shapes. Uh, Ford actually looks a little more bullish than GM as a stock. You can see it's holding up above those eight and ten dollar air share levels at twelve now. So it's keeping a little more strength. It obviously has have like everything else, but it's holding up a little better. Brokers are still not quite as strong as they used to be in 21, 22. This is the auto semi-supply thing that hit both GM and Ford. As soon as the 22 hit, you can see this auto semi problem and their volumes really hurt them. So auto, GM and Ford have been taken down because of that issue. All right, so now we get into the price earnings per share and surprise charts. These are our classic charts. And what I found interesting here, you know, over here we've got Two are our new newbies. This is Nicola and this is ChargePoint. We'll talk about more about ChargePoint in, in detail. This is your charging station network that's really you know, got a lot of interest right now. Nicola obviously is just in that commercial vehicle electric space. Over here are our big majors, GM, Ford, Tesla, and Volkswagen. What you're going to notice here is GM's uh, you know, fair value and earnings are $7 and been holding up. So they actually have not lost profitability through this sell-off. For whatever reason, there's a big gap here. The same is true for Ford. Uh, you know, they've had a little bit of reductions in their earning estimates for 22 and 23. But for the most part, 20, GM and Ford are actually holding up well as businesses. G, you know, Ford's in at $2 a share, GM's at 7 And the stocks are trading way down. They're halving. And they're actually back to those levels in 2019. Whereas again, Ford is a little higher. Interesting to note this. Then we get Tesla. Tesla is back to these lows, but only two-year lows. So I would say Tesla most bullish, Ford next bullish, and then GM third. Volkswagen not bullish at all. 
Um, but again, I don't actually see the earnings estimate revisions rolling over that much. If you want to see what a rollover looks like, that's what a rollover looks like, charge point in the cooler. You don't see that over here. Okay, let's keep going. All right, this is the uh, upgrade downgrades of these stocks. This is fascinating. This is Ford. This is Volkswagen. This is Neo. We're talking about Neo. That's a Chinese-based, Shanghai-based group. You can see Neo actually went up and down too. So you didn't really get anywhere with Neo in this whole story. Nikola obviously zeroed out. But then what I notice here is look at look at this long, you know, 2014, 15, 16, 17. There was a lot of strength in G GM. And now obviously none of it came out through the share price. There's been no movement in that share price. This is what people loved about Tesla as a stock. You could see if you bought it in before 2019, it took off. Ford actually has done a lot better. This has been a lot better trade than General Motors. And Volkswagen, just like for General Motors, there's been no movement for 10 years. These stocks are kind of not getting the bid, even though their, their electric vehicle production is probably stronger, stronger. So this is something to point out here. If you're looking to invest in this space. It's a lot more complicated to do it through shares than you might think. And that I want to point out. Also over here, I put up the definition of an exponential moving average for you so that you understand how it works. We're putting that in. The EMA is going to be moving along in this line, tracking this whole experience so you can see whether the price is above or below the EMA in this chart. Fascinating stuff. Remember, just remember that share prices and Zach's ranks and the EMA are all playing a role in picking your stock place. And it's really not about the technology. All right, so these EPS version are going to make my case here. General Motors, you know, two years out, downward revisions, getting more positive this year. Same is true for Ford, Tesla. Actually, people are getting more positive about the stocks, the earning estimates now. The one that's not doing well is Volkswagen. We know that story because of the Russian energy crisis. So Volkswagen is getting hit harder, just like Europe is. Um, Interesting to think, though, from a trading perspective, if there is a bottom found in the German share markets and the, the turnaround happens in Russia, you may get the electric vehicle play here in Volkswagen. But of course, Tesla is the strong suit in the earning estimate space. That's why the stock is going up so much. The same terms of earning estimates on the EBITDA levels. Again, General Motors down, Tesla up. But Ford actually is looking good. Like I said, you want to rank stocks for, from an earnings estimate provision perspective. You want to put your efforts on Tesla, then Ford, and then Volkswagen GM, kind of the same. All right, valuation metrics. Again, guys, look at this. You know, that's the bubble. It's really hard to understand. Uh, this is a dividend yield, the 10 year treasury yield for these stocks. But you can see the bubble that was produced by the money printing here. What I do like is enterprise value to a bit to here. This is the actual chart that I would focus on on this point. Here is the enterprise value to a bit to for Tesla. And down here is Volkswagen. Ford and GM are kind of tracking the same. GM's a little, you know, been, been holding up more stably. Ford had a little bubblicious thing back there. Now they're back to the point. It's kind of tracking one another. But this is basically the market three. Tesla on top GM and Ford. Like I said, value buyer, you could think of this purely as a Volkswagen play. Obviously, this is a really overvalued stock. You can have a lot of problems here for yourself and Tesla. GM and Ford, basically the same. Price of tangible book doesn't tell us a lot. And free cash flow return on investment. Here it is. That is actually Volkswagen. So from cheap and free cash flow high, Volkswagen's coming out. I would wait on the Volkswagen trade, but it's certainly there uh, for you. Okay, CapEx. I'm going to look through all this again. What I'm seeing again is Ford is actually in a net margin. Profit margin has taken off. That's what I wanted to show you here. Basically, the Ford net margin is improving dramatically. Ford has figured out how to run a profitable truck business for that F-150. And we're going to really have people improve their margins. So I think you got to give Ford credit here for improving itself on its net margin basis.
However, Ford has really increased its total debt to total assets. That's here. You can see Ford did this by putting out a ton of debt. So they built the profitability, but they made this huge investment. So Ford has made some big gambles in their capital structure to get this electric vehicle thing moving. All right, shareholder yield. Again, this is what I want to point out. The shareholder yield is right here. This is the chart that I want. GM is in blue, Ford is in red, Volkswagen is green, Tesla is orange or purple. So shareholder yield right here, you can see Tesla really improved itself recently and got in line with all these other majors. That's impressive. That's what you want to understand is that Tesla, from a shareholder yield perspective, which is the ratio that indicates how much money shareholders receive from in terms of cash dividend, stock reduction, debt reduction, Tesla as a stock, as a stock, has gotten a lot better. That's what I wanted to point out here. Okay, so this is the DuPont uh, story of these things. You can look at the ROE percent of gap. You know, again, this is fascinating for 10, 12 years. This is Tesla, this is GM, Ford. Over here is Volkswagen. This is Magna. Now, Magna is an auto parts supplier. I just want to point out, you know, the, the language here for Magna. The ongoing chip prices hit hard Magna's product. Low vehicle production and supply bound are expected to continue for the rest of 2022. Volumes in North America, China, and Europe are expected to remain well below levels in 22, including lost sales, high prices of incomes, increased manufacturing costs, high freight costs. Europe, brunt of energy and shortages, unfriable forex with the weak in euro, heavy investment in tax, like we talked. As such, advisors, investors are, are told to stay away from this stock. I wonder when the contrarians jump in here on Magna. As you can see, the ROEs definitely have plunged here in 22 is 7%. They used to be 20% for these auto parts suppliers. So there's there's a play here to buy the bottom on Magna, but right now our, our analysts are very pessimistic on these suppliers. Now, Magna can supply all these groups, right? The other thing to understand is they're all buying these parts from the same place. Okay, now we're going to get into these new age fueling stocks. This is ChargePoint, and here is EVGO. Down here, we've got Wallbox, which is based in Barcelona, and then we've got Hylion Holdings, which I know very little about. But what I want to point out to you is, for the most part, these are very bubblish stocks. They all got blown up at the same time, and they're all been sold off at the same time. But you're going to understand from auto fueling stocks. Remember, you got to plug these batteries in to get charge, and that creates these charge points in EV, electric vehicle, go, and wall box. Obviously, that is you know your wall box for plugging in. Highland has got a whole bunch of different things. So what I want to point out is now we've birth all these new age auto feeling stocks. You get a look at them, very bubblicious area. Charge point is the most interesting one that is in the United States. Hundreds of thousands of places to charge, one account to access in either Europe or North America. So you basically get one account and you're getting all hundreds of thousands of places to charge. Used to pay $45 this year, now it's 12. This company does not make money this year or next year. It's getting a little better. Keep this in mind, this company does not make money. And, but it will give you this cloud subscription platform and hardware that will put, you know, you in charge of working, parking, hospitality, retail, wherever you go, you're going to get a place to charge with charge point. Stock's down to 12 bucks. Again, from an investor perspective, this is a lot trickier thing than you might understand. NEO is fascinating. It was founded in 2014. It's headquartered in Shanghai. And what I would point out here is I've got this link to the NEO house. This is what they have in various parts of Shanghai, very sophisticated, like Apple looking store looking thing. It's like an Apple like emporium, an open, open welcoming space for all our universities and communities to express, share, and experience memorable moments together. Because this thing, these Neil houses, is a lab, they have a library, they have a cafe, they have a joy camp for the kids, a gallery with all the stuff, and forums, you know, basically classrooms for learning about your neo so that the neo has this neo house and this is basically the tesla of china this went public in 2018. the, the selling proposition is to ride electric vehicles at competitive pricing neo does not manufacture its own cars it's done through state-owned jac motors in anhui province which is the inward internal province from shanghai it's right next to shanghai in the interior in turn, JAC charges a fee for each car. 
like I said, Anhui is an interior province just east of Shanghai. So JAC and Anhui provides the cars to Neo houses and Neo and, and Shanghai, and this whole thing is IPO'd in 2018. And these are very swanky, by the way. Very interesting to put in and look at the Neo house. Again, does the stock work for you? It does not. Earnings estimates are holding up, but again, it does not make money. It might make money in a couple of years. None of these things make money. That's why these stocks are selling off. Until they make money, it's really not a trade for the investor. It's the speculator. All right, here's the production timeline. First one, at Mobileye, by the way, the, the, the Israeli Autonomous Driving Group has been working closely with NEO. And they, the autonomous production you'll see in the, a lot of these vehicles online is you can see where they're putting on NEO. And they, Mobileye, by the way, was acquired by Intel in 2017. It's based in Jerusalem. But Neo and Verse introduced its first model in 2016, the EP9. That was a sports car, just like Tesla. 2017, it was the SUV ES8, they called it. And this had a range of 500 kilometers there. Next one was the ES6. That was a five-seater SUV, so smaller, bigger, smaller. And then they did this, and that had a range of 600 kilometers, obviously a little smaller vehicle 2020 they introduced the ec6 it's a five seat coupe and then the et7 which begins delivery just recently a couple of months ago this thing is online it's fascinating look at this has got the mobile eye information very worth your time and they're going to put out the new mid-size electric sedan et5 sometime this year so they got a lot of different names and, and trucks and they go to the neo house and take a look at this stuff all right, so this is that what our analyst said. Rising demand for all these things is enhancing the firm's revenue, not as profits. State backing, strategic partnership with Mobileye, which you're talking about. They also have battery swap technology. You can swap the batteries. So then what you do is you go in, you just get a new battery put in and not sit around and wait for the charge. Fascinating concept here with a battery swap. But again, like I said, Advise to wait for a better entry point. These stocks are really not the place to invest in right now. Much more interesting to look at and watch than to invest. So I will tell you next time around about the ETFs and the autonomous vehicle holdings. I hope you enjoyed my talk today. This is fascinating stuff. Next week or two weeks from now, we'll get into the ETFs, and how this all fits together at the ETF level for both electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles. Just not enough time today to get through all this. Obviously, we've had a ton of information to throw at you, and I think this will carry on really well into another set of slides and another talk. So thanks for attending. Really appreciate you coming on and learning about these things with me. And here is where you can get hold of these slides. You can call us at 866-794-6065. Email us at strategycall at zaxpro.com or get us on the web at zaxpro.com. Also on LinkedIn and Twitter. Great stuff. I hope you enjoyed it today. That's it for me.